in. So what do you think Protestants and Catholics are? A Celtic supporter. Not as nice as us. A holy person who's a wee bit like a normal person. Someone who doesn't go to church and takes God's name in vain. Aggressive. And they only think of themselves. Someone who fights and insults other people. A Celtic fan who always goes to chapel. A Rangers supporter. A bit jealous. This then separation of sheep and goats, Catholics and Protestants, you could believe silly things about the other lot. You're left in ignorance of the other lot. The values of prejudice on religion come from exactly the same place that values of prejudice around race or sexuality or, or whatever it might be would come. It comes from within the home, comes from within the family. Effectively from prejudice breeds prejudice. Family. You're growing up with, aren't you? I think sectarianism comes from a, a whole um, host of, of avenues. I think uh, when you look back on it, there's, there's, a, there's a history element, particularly with that, with the, the old firm. Historical elements, socio-economic elements. I think a lot of it comes from, you know, the, the Irish uh, background, and a lot, I know a lot of this are. Uh, Rangers and Protestant and Catholic and Celtic issues have been with us for a long number of years. And there can be very sectarian and bigoted and discriminatory attitudes across society. I think the family has an influence, I think society has an influence, I think tribalism has an influence, I think there's all sorts of factors. I don't think sectarianism comes down to one thing. People might say where you come from, uh, parental attitudes, just, just really what, what, what surrounds you. Last year, the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service report showed that there were 693 cases of religiously motivated crime, an increase of 10% on the previous year. These crimes are the embodiment of religious hatred and prejudice that is proving to be a harmful, destructive feature of Scottish society. When attempting to establish where these sectarian beliefs have stemmed from, Many Scottish people believe that they are passed down from generation to generation and are intrinsic to the way of life to certain families. Because it's been carried on for years, generations, through their fathers, sons, what have you, and they'll just sing away. Well, an awful lot of it's in the home, and the kind of, you know, you're not going to, there aren't going to be, in, the, in this day and age, I don't think there's not explicit, bigoted, um, lessons being taught in class or out in the community. It's what you hear in the home is the most important, I suppose, important way of shaping your um, attitudes and opinions. At the very basic level, unfortunately, young generations, they can pick up, uh, you know, sectarian behaviour, sectarian way of thinking from home. That's, that's definitely a given. You know, you've got your adult role models. They're saying certain things to, to, the, to their kids. And obviously it's not a surprise that then those kids will, will replicate and will, will use it on the streets, will use it with their, with their friends. My dad from Dublin, um, he in a way was a bit of a sectarian. My granddad as well. Like I'm saying, it's the sort of old school. Uh, my dad was, was quite sectarian. I wouldn't say he was the worst, but he certainly, I mean, he could have been a lot nicer about the way he dealt with things. The mom and dad, what, Celtic supporters, well, so are their brains and vice versa. 
Uh, they're mad Rangers supporters and so are their daughters and their sons. Oh, I know lots and lots of people that. Just saying little things to their kids, and maybe their kids is maybe four or five, you think, mm, that's not good. It's a virgin on uh, tyranny as well. You know what I mean? People were dehumanising other groups, or the Catholics, or don't talk to them, or we don't, even if, I've seen my friends say, oh, we don't talk to them, and it's saying it as half joking. But the kids are not really sure. What do you mean half joking? Why do we not talk to them? You didn't have a choice. Well, your dad just went and bought you a Celtic tap, and that was that. He didn't say, do you like support? But they didn't even mention the word Rangers. <laughs> don't talk about that when you get mentioned, so. But you never got a chance. Sectarian beliefs manifest themselves in many ways. Most people will understand sectarianism through the very specific language linked to the rivalry between Catholic and Protestant, Rangers and Celtic. Down the left with the Aki's, they are very inexperienced. Unfortunately, however, sectarianism can, in many cases, develop from verbal abuse into physical violence. Disturbing examples such as the murder of Thomas McFadden, Patrick McBride and Mark Scott, to name but a few, show just how far religious hatred can be taken. Many Scottish people have seen this within their own community and can cite their own examples of overt sectarian beliefs being voiced and developing into violence. When I grew up, you know, the school that I was next to, they'd fight with each other because one was a Protestant, one was a Catholic school. That was the reality. I don't think the kids knew what they were doing, but that was the way, you know, it was, it was almost as if our peers had, had left that image that that was a, a, a part of society that was acceptable. There's also in our community, sadly, on the day of an old firm match, people who are hostile to their neighbours anyway will, st will overlay that with a sectarian dimension and that does have to be challenged. I remember when I was maybe primary four or primary five, I was walking home, a couple, me and a couple of my mates, and we bumped into these boys for Quarry Bray, and we were the Catholics and they were the Protestants, and at that point it was, you're sort of taught they're the enemy and we're the good guys and so we are getting in a wee scuffle and that was the first time I remember because we had nothing against the boys, they seemed, we didn't even exchange words, we just seen them, we knew they weren't for your school so they had to be for Quarry Bray and that was it, the battle was on. Obviously I look back, I'm ashamed of that, I mean we shouldn't have done that but you're young and you don't, you don't fully understand it yet yourself, you, you're not educated in yourself enough to know that I can be different for what they're telling me today. Oh I hear people shouting you know, and on or whatever you're feeling, you know whatever. Absolutely, you get that all the time. Particularly people get a drink in them, you know. For me in secondary school, I would say my biggest experiences of sectarianism were any time I get into any kind of scuffle, it was due to the language that was getting used, you know, like your Fenian, ah, well, you're orange, well, that's it then, Barney, you know what I mean? That's the way it seemed to work. But why, why do you think they would say that? Because it'll make somebody else angry. You're trying to provoke somebody. Because I know people that watch a Celtic game and my old man are about maybe eight, nine, ten pints in them, they just turn into pff, the Hulk. And I don't know, it's, you can't just blame it on alcohol because the stuff's got to be there. But I think alcohol brings it out. And 
I, it's quite sad you see guys at my age, 50, 60, still going on about and calling you somebody a blah blah bee or a blah blah bee. Remember years ago when I was a schoolboy, yeah, Glasgow Green, I was playing for a school called St Mary's. And I think the ring supporters were going to Shawfield at the time, they cut through Glasgow Green out there. No. And the guy came up to say, what's the score? I said, I'm a one and two one. Oh, who you play for? I said, I went to St Mary's and helped me out of here, he'd be a I was only 13. <laughs> Physical violence has had a long history in relation to sectarianism. There are many examples after old firm matches where people have been hurt simply because of some form of sectarian motivation. Yet there can be a more subtle and psychologically damaging dimension that can affect individuals and families, whether it is parents attempting to subdue rebellious children or those children questioning their parents' values. As I said, you know, I don't want to use it as a cliche, but there is always a minority with their entrenched, strong views that spoils it for, for, for the rest. My boy's a range supporter, and uh, he was, when all the totty picking song was out and all that, I mean, he was sick to be totty picking and go home and all that, and so he was getting that at school and he was getting it, I don't know, in the papers and all that, and so I, I, he's, my boy's, his, my boy's a range supporter. Quite strange, but that's the way it is. What, what hurted, hurts me is I can't take him to football. I can say from my personal experience, I've spoken to fans. They're very passionate about their teams and perhaps not even like old firm fans sometimes, but they do make a point at certain key games during the season not to take, not to go themselves or take their sons or daughters. They think because they love the team so much, they can get away with whatever they like. You know, I'm a die-hard Celtic man, I've never missed a game, so I can sing and do whatever I like, which is wrong, and it's this exact same on Rangers' side, you know, they've got a hardcore away following, and those are the, it's the hardcore people that seem to buy into, like, the ethos of the club and the history that think that that's OK. I think it's a big problem in, not necessarily Scotland, but uh, central Scotland, it's definitely a problem. When I go to... Inverness and places like that didn't seem to have the same effect, sectarianism up there, as it has in Glasgow City, particularly Glasgow and Edinburgh. Because I've been brought up here, and I was brought up just in the corner of the Ibrox Park. People are just realising it is stupid. It's senseless. What's the point? It's quite hard to be the bigger man and go, I don't care about that. Especially when you're on things like school and, you know, you've obviously got a lot of other issues and it's easy to get offended with stuff like that because he's different and I don't like this and all that. There's many people out there that they, they don't want to see it anymore. They want a new, a new culture being, being agreed by, by everyone, you know, a culture of respect, a culture of where you go and support your team, you're passionate about your team, but not at the detriment of, of the other side. The only thing I can say about that is when, if you're in a situation where your mum or your dad are teaching you sectarian beliefs, you can know better than that, you know what I mean? If, if you are intelligent enough to know better than that, it's not okay to go, I will, my dad says it's fine. Because you know better, so you should, and this is what I've done, you know, I've realised that that's, it's completely pointless, it's a waste of time and it's, it's harmful. The place sectarianism holds within society has certainly changed over recent years. There is clear evidence that it is a small proportion of the Scottish population that fosters these beliefs. 28% in 2010 considered that there was ever a good reason for prejudice. Two thirds believed that Scotland should do everything it can to get rid of all kinds of bigotry.
Jo, and then my show then was at Tourism was a Celtic Rangers game. Yeah, and that was only for 90 minutes. People say there's no such thing as a 90 minute bigot, but I think that sometimes people find some things that they see acceptable somehow because it's in the context of the football match, that has to be challenged. Where I was brought up, uh, it was people were Catholic, people were Protestant, you know, mixed, we were all friends. You know, I never, uh, there was a lot of shouting, a lot of abuse and all that, but that, that still goes on to the day. Yeah, there was loads and loads of that, but I very rarely ever seen any battles going on. In the past, historically, People were discriminated in, in the workplace on the basis that they were Catholics. We have moved a long way from that. But so the first thing is I don't think we should assume it's a direct link to poverty and disadvantage. But clearly in communities where you know um, there is perhaps a lack of hope or there's a lack of community engagement and people mixing with each other, I think the greatest thing, if people are um, working together, talking together, then how do you hate somebody that you know? People are not born bigoted or racist. People are just uh, very accepting, I believe, when they're born. That's something that people are taught. That behaviour is something that people learn from their peers, I think. It got passed out of me from my father. Right, no. But I'm proud to say I never carried it on. No, no I'm not saying I'm a goody goody. Don't get me wrong. <coughs> but I never passed it to any of my father. If my pal came to the door and was for us and he'd get in the bar and stay the night, get fed water, they never get mentioned in my house. And when I met my wife, it never get mentioned either. It never get mentioned either because that's the way my dad was. Although he was Catholic, he was sort of royalist because he fought the British Army. Then in secondary school, it was a wee bit different because I went to a Catholic secondary school as well, but there was a lot more than just Catholics in the school. We had Muslims, Protestants, uh, Sikhs, the whole, the whole shebang. It was quite a big school. And at that point, you started to realise that the differences weren't as big as you thought they were. It was kind of like, you know, they don't have three heads and four arms. They're actually just exactly the same as us. Society is becoming more accepting of difference. However, sectarianism, no matter how large or small, is an aspect of Scottish society that cannot be tolerated and has to be challenged. The Scottish Government has taken bold steps to stamp out the sectarian problem in Scotland by introducing the Behaviour at Football and Threatening Communications Bill. Yet, the Government and police won't be able to stop sectarianism on their own. The only way this is going to work around tackling violence and disorder is families, uh, you know, educating their kids, kids being aware of what's right and what's wrong, uh, there's a lot of stuff happening on the internet that's, you know, going to a stage where there's, there's risks to the, to the kids themselves being involved in criminality. They probably don't understand it. So there's a whole range of things, but I think a lot of family values need to come into that. In my opinion, um, the only real way to tackle problems like this is through education, because it's a lack of education that's causing the problem, and uh, they don't seem to be doing enough to educate the young people. I don't think the government does enough to maybe get in about schools and about young parents to educate them on the, the impact of their own language and their own attitudes and also the way they behave has an effect on their children. I'll try and challenge it. Education, schools, people coming in, football players, get a select player to go to a Rangers school and get a Rangers player to go to a select school and show them they're not getting two horns. I think uh, around football, if we're, if we're talking about football, there needs to be, I would say, fans accepting that other fans are going to have different attitudes, um, but embrace that um, and welcome that kind of behaviour that uh, we all have different opinions. Um, and I think through the work that everybody's involved around violence or around football, that we all listen to each other and we work together. But I think we have to be optimistic. There's been a huge change from when people were living in silo communities, you know, where maybe the Catholic community was in one area and Protestant community in another. Much more, you know, people are much more relaxed about who they get married to or don't get married to. So all of that, I think, is um, great progress. And I guess the reason why we pay a bit of attention to the Ranger Celtic thing is because it's really one of the few places where you might hear these kind of explicit kind of comments, and even they have been reduced. Now, I'm not saying I'm understating um, the concern. I think you always have to be vigilant, you have to be challenging, but the progress we've made, I think, gives us some hope for the future. As we have seen, there are many examples in Scotland of sectarianism, and the general public are very aware of the problem and the complications that come with it. 
Yet, there is a great deal of good work being done by communities, organisations and the football clubs themselves that deserve to be mentioned, and which will, no doubt, have a profoundly positive effect. Uh, we're working with many schools. We see as um, more and more um, a drive towards um, joint campuses or schools that are working together. And they do, and I'm not saying it just uh, for, you know, I really mean it. Schools collaborate, collaborate quite a lot. An example, a sense of a sectarianism, they've been carrying out wonderful work across the Glasgow area, uh, bringing campuses together. And it's not just a new initiative, it's been going on for years. Schools in Glasgow are taking a, a very proactive role. There's something like 90 schools in Glasgow doing Divided City this year, which, which combats discrimination prejudice at all levels through racism and sectarianism. I have been, last year, uh, visited 83 schools in Glasgow to deliver anti-sectarian workshops and will probably uh, exceed that number this year. Schools in Glasgow are very, very proactive in, in combating sectarianism. I'm, I've never been in so much demand. Very good examples within the local primaries and secondary schools of joint initiatives. So that's a very important um, building block for community harmony later on. But I also think that education um, can be also offered outside the classroom. The Crooks and Boys is a Rangers team, and St Conwells are the sort of self. But we're all pals, we're all friends, it's all for a good cause. So they're, they're all buddies, they've all known each other for a long, long time. We're here to raise money for St James's Church. So on Friday night in the Crookston Bowling Club we had a, a quiz night, we got about 400 quid. And we're hoping to, this is a charity football game today as well against the Crookston Old Crocs versus St Conville's Old Crocs. So we're actually winning one nothing now, we're pumping them one nothing. So hopefully we'll raise a good few pounds a day as well, not a lot go towards the local church. In one constituency, faith group and organisations, like other community organisations, do work to build community cohesion, so it's not something that's emerging out of the faith communities now, and so I think that gives us a great deal of hope. Nowadays, we work very much more together uh, than we did. There are um, whole periods of the year where we work together. Um, for example, in an area like this, we um, do remembrance together. Um, we do parts of Holy Week together, leading up to Easter. There are a whole series of points during the year where we work ecumenically and obviously not just with the Catholic Church but with the other denominations in the area. The more we are united in, in this type of work and the better results. Uh, and also as an organisation we can help each other. Well, I was heavily involved in the Joint Action Group which was the Old Firm Summit um, and it opened my eyes probably to see the level of um, activities that Rangers and Celtic both bring to the communities, particularly around educating uh, young people. The younger generation will lead the way here. The more the younger generation say, look, I don't care about all your old school rules, I'm just, I'm marrying a Catholic or I'm mates with a Protestant, whatever it is it's going to be, the better it will get because the old people look at it and go, actually, maybe they're right. Maybe they won't, but you know what, they're old, <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore.